how to replace the radiator in a 1997 to 2004 C5 Chevy Corvette. I am Steven Wimberly and this is Working with Wimberly. The first step is to remove the air filter assembly. Um, I've already disconnected the harness from the mass airflow sensor and disconnected this vent tube. I'm going to keep taking everything else apart to get this whole assembly out of the way. That way we'll have access to the cover that's covering the top of the radiator. So I have everything loose down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to loosen the clamp so that I can remove the air filter assembly. Yours may look differently if you still have your factory air filter, but go ahead and just take everything out because you need to get to the cover that's over the radiator. I just moved one of the wire harnesses out of the way and now we can get to this cover. So with the air filter assembly out, we can go to this cover. Now there are two 10 millimeter bolts that need to come out. So I'm gonna remove those from the driver side and it's the same thing on the passenger side. So use your 10 millimeter socket, ratchet and extension to remove the bolts. So we can see with the two bolts out from the driver's side, it's loose. Now I'm gonna take out the two from the passenger side. With the four 10 millimeter bolts out, we should be able to remove the cover. So now I need to disconnect the coolant lines, but before I do that, I'm gonna drain it out from the bottom. Then over here on the lower corner of the passenger side is the drain plug so I'm just going to loosen that and let all of the fluid out so this drain plug on the new one is the same as the one on the old one I just want to show you I'm going to use a reducer with the quarter inch end on it actually fits perfect in here that way you can undo it and let the fluid out so I'm going to use this on the one that's still on the car With the plug out and the coolant draining, I'm going to disconnect these two lines at the top of the radiator on the passenger side. So with the two hoses on the passenger side disconnected, I'm gonna move on to the driver's side, remove this clamp so that I can remove the upper radiator hose from the driver's side. The upper radiator hose is disconnected and I have it up out of the way. So once again, I'm using the new radiator for reference. You guys saw me loosen and remove the plug to let out all of the coolant. Then you saw me remove the two hoses from the top on the passenger side. And you just saw me remove the upper radiator hose from the driver's side. Now the next step is to remove the lower radiator hose from the passenger side. 
I don't think I'm going to get a good shot of this from underneath. There's just not a lot of room, but this is the next step. I'm going to remove this lower radiator hose. This was the hardest part of the job for me. I wrestled with this clamping hose for about 20 minutes before I got it off. So just be patient and take your time with this. The lower radiator hose is disconnected. The cooling fans are loose. There's another condenser that's clipped on the front of it. If I can just lift this up and out of the way, I think I can get the radiator out. The radiator fits into a slot on each end. It's not bolted in at all. I had to wiggle it back and forth from each side. I just went back and forth and just made sure it cleared everything and eventually I was able to remove the radiator. So here's the old radiator, here's the new one. So I'm going to try to slip this back in place and put it together. Installation is the reverse of the removal process. Slip the radiator into place, connect all of the hoses, install the air filter assembly and the radiator cover, and top off the coolant. And this job is done. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. God bless you all.